Hello, hello. I have just finished uni at a lovely 25 past three. So I am off to the gym for a leg, for a leg day, for a leg day, um, or a leg session, I suppose. <clears throat> As of late, I've been trying to put more intensity into my quads, um, only because they're, I wouldn't say significantly, but relatively lacking if you compare them to my hamstrings. Like, I never used to train my hamstrings properly, or at least at a high intensity. So I went through a phase of training them really hard, um, which I still do now to this day. But that means my quads have dropped back a bit because um, my quads were always a genetic strong point, at least in comparison to my hamstrings. They were never great, but um, they definitely weren't bad. They just were a lot better than my hamstrings. So my leg days are going to be more quad focused to begin with. In a few months time, I'll review my leg day or my leg session and sort of see where my quads are at in comparison to my hamstrings or vice versa. So hopefully they will have caught up and be relatively balanced. Um, and I'm hoping it's a hard decision for me in terms of what muscle is lacking because I want them to be even. So the way I do my leg sessions is I'll start with the compound. This is how you should really do any of your sessions. Start with compounds. Um, usually a good way to get the muscle moving, get the blood flowing into the muscle you're working. Uh, and then you can work on your isolation movements after that. So I'll be doing quad compound, quad isolation, hamstring compound, hamstring, hamstring isolation. Then I'll move on to my adductors and potentially calves at the end. I don't neglect my calves, but they're quite a, you know, they don't massively matter to me. I don't not enjoy training them, but I don't really see a point in training them, to be honest, uh, unless they're massively lacking behind the other muscle groups in my legs. So. That is why. Right, this is reason number 47,000 why I love this gym. It's empty. There is no one here. So really, I can be as loud as I want and not be called a douche or a dickhead. So we're starting with a hack squat today. So if anyone's used a hack squat before, they will know that it's the most humbling experience ever. Uh, so I'm gonna warm up with five kilos each side. <clears throat> and then I'll have to check my plan to see what my working weight is. Cool. Good little warm up. My phone decided to have a little Mardi, but apparently my working weight is 50 kilos uh, plus the weight of the machine but I don't know why you would count the weight of the machine because it just makes tracking your weight so much harder than uh, it needs to be just gonna pretend I didn't almost drop the plate on my finger also I'm gonna keep my shoes off for this exercise just because it saves me taking them off and on loads of times to uh, Put my knee sleeves on and I know it's not a lot of weight but I have probably the worst knees known to man uh, just doing that warm-up I had a sharp pain go through my left knee it is mainly my left knee but why would I wear a knee sleeve on one leg but not the other might as well have support on both gonna aim for eight to ten it should happen, but you never know what happens with a hack squat. <clears throat> I 
Well, that was surprisingly easy. I'm not gonna lie. And I did not get any pain. So either that's because the knee sleeves are working or the weight's too light. I think the weight is too light though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap a five for a 10 on each side. So it'll now be 60 kg each side. Sorry, no, not each side. 60 kg total. Uh, and then probably eight reps because 10 wasn't super, super challenging. So should be fine. One thing I'm tempted to try is some foam blocks at the back of my heels or I suppose the back of my Achilles tendon uh, on the hamstring curl because I never get a good enough stretch on it. It's you know the highest it can be and well at least it is when I when I do it um, and I don't get a good enough stretch like it's, it's it's good but not good enough I don't think for me anyway um, personally I want it to be like proper proper stretching I want to be able to feel it all the way up my leg so right so Gonna go for eight, but might even get 10. But this is an extra 10 kilos overall, so <coughs> I'll be happy with eight. Right, so even that weight was too light. I got 12 reps. I must admit, I think it looks a lot easier than it feels. Uh, that probably didn't look that close to failure, but it felt it. I probably could have got one or two more. So, might be a smart decision to do a 20 and a 15 each side. Next session. I don't want to keep up in the weight if it's too light this session. So I'm just going to give myself unnecessary fatigue, but 70 kilos, I think, is fair. Well, I just realised I completely messed up my weights. This is my normal working set. Saturday before this was 50, not 60. This is 60. So, but even so, now I know. For next session, that I can do more than this. So I'll probably do 70, maybe 75. We'll see. Well, I'll just double check the weights for hack squat and I was right. I was supposed to do 50 kilos. So I upped it to 60 because it was too easy. And then 60 was too easy. So now I've got to do 70. So I was right. I think I was right. I think I just got my wording wrong. 
Anyway, moving on to leg extensions. It's supposed to be on 86 kilos. Um, and drop setting to 54 or 45, depending on how it feels. Okay, so I felt the foam blocks over there, they were too thin or too, what's the word, cushiony. So I'm gonna use these instead, because they're a bit more what I, yeah, it's not a great stretch, but just better than the uh, original stretch of this machine. So go for about, mm, go for eight. Sorry, I meant to say 50 or 45, not 54 or 45. Alright, I do find it really hard to reach failure, at least with quads. With hamstrings, I find it quite easy, I don't know why. Uh, with quads, I find it so difficult. Um, honestly, couldn't tell you why. But it's annoying, because I want to take it to failure, and I've tried, but I feel like the fatigue in my quads just hits so quickly. Uh, it's like it goes from no pain or ache, or you know what I mean, to like, loads of pain, loads of ache. So, don't, don't quite know what's going on there, but maybe that means I'm just reaching failure quick. But it doesn't ever feel like it's complete, complete failure. Also, another reason why I would train hamstrings first is because posterior chain exercises for your legs won't impact the performance of compound anterior chain exercises, but vice versa they do. So doing anterior chain exercises for your legs first will affect your performance in compound um, posterior chain exercises. So to dumb it down a bit, doing your quads first will impact your compound hamstring exercises like RDLs, but doing your hamstrings first won't affect your quad compound exercises like squats and squat variations so that's why I used to do it uh, but I think that was affecting my progress in terms of hypertrophy and my quads so you've got to sort of take the good with the bad and just I've got to cope basically if I want my uh, quads to gain a bit more size that's a bit of a that's a punt I've got to take I suppose and moving on to RDLs like I said, starting with compounds, then I'll move on to isolation after. Got 100 kilo warm up, and then my working set will be 120. I'm going to do this for a couple reps because you know my body's already warm, but my hamstrings aren't. So. I know I said that was a warm-up, but that did feel a lot easier than I thought it would. Maybe 120 will move easier than I thought it would as well. Two solid sets. One quick thing to note for RDLs, if you're trying to use them to target your hamstrings, you shouldn't be shifting your butt back miles away. You want to be doing relatively, it's not, you know, it's not a stiff leg deadlift, but it's a, uh, you definitely don't want to be shifting your butt back this far. You want to have a very slight bend in your knees and so that you can feel it in your hamstrings. Um, the further you shift your butt back, the more 
glute you'll be getting. But equally, if you're doing RDLs for your glutes, shift your butt back. But if you're not, don't. Just get a slight bend in your knees. Well, that was harder than I thought it'd be. Got nine, but I felt my back go in, so I had to cool it there. I'm gonna give myself a long old rest. Bang out one more set, and then work on isolation for my hamstrings. All right, that last set of RDLs killed me, uh, but these can come off now. Working at 54 kilos on this at the minute, uh, but no doubt the weight will fly up in the next few, I don't know, weeks or so. I think that was like eight and a couple. It's not bad at all. I'm finding it hard to get used to the seated leg curl because my old gym had a lying leg curl or a prone leg curl. Um, so I was used to the movement of that. I felt it a lot easier to brace. So you'd lie down, hold the handles and pull in. Brace like you do on like a hack squat, I suppose. But it's not the same on this. But a hamstring pump, I must admit, feels weirdly good. Like, good in a weird way. Just can't stand a quad pump. It makes me feel like jelly legs, just so unbalanced. But hamstring pump, I just love. I'm obsessed with them. Right, that's hamstrings done for me, finally. I think that was like six and a couple force reps, or half reps, so move on to adductors and uh, we're done. Unpopular opinion, but adductors is the best feeling muscle in your legs to train, personally. It just feels great, I don't know why. The squeeze you get in the middle feels amazing. Um, at least in comparison to all the other leg muscles. I'm not saying it's the most interesting muscle to train, but it's, uh, you know, it feels good.
knuckles are still small, but they'll get there. Right, quick check of the leg pump. Nothing amazing, um, but hopefully you now see why I don't train calves, because I've got quite good calf genetics already. So that's my leg day done. It was, not gonna lie, like hard that was a hard session um but it was a quick session it took me about fill mm, 45 minutes ish um but that's what we call efficient training so i will uh be back in the next video with my chest and back day catch you in a bit